This is it. There's an opportunity to thank the Lord for what he's done in your life. There's an opportunity to point people to who God is to you. But it's sad to say as Christians, most of us live our life never really reflecting who God is. And never really showing the world that it's because of Christ that we are anything that we are today. Revelation chapter 22. And I'll close with this. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 22. I think it's important that we see this verse. It's interesting in Revelation 22 that God told John, seal not the sayings of the prophecy in this book, for the time is at hand. It leads me to believe that God communicated often with his disciples uh, things that we may not read in the scriptures today. Things that we may not know, but God said, listen, I want Christianity. The time is at hand. They need to read this, the book of Revelation. Don't seal it. Don't hide it. Revelation chapter 22, verse number 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Living as a Christian and identifying yourself as a Christian in the world should not be something we're ashamed or embarrassed of. Think about that young girl who, who was embarrassed uh, to claim that, that the horribly scarred woman was her mother. How heartbreaking that must have been to that mother, but I can guarantee you that that mother didn't decide, well, I wish I could go back and just let you die in the fire. Why? Because a parent's heart yearns to save and protect a child regardless of how the child reacts. And Jesus yearns and how heartbroken he is when we as his children pretend that we don't know him pretend that we're not associated with him when the opportunity comes up and jesus says hey this is an opportunity to brag on me this is an opportunity to tell the world how wonderful of a parent i am to you and we just disassociate ourselves. yeah i worked really hard i've done really well i'm such a hard worker i do really great and god's saying it's only because of me that you're anything When's the last time we told anyone that? When's the last time we were not ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ? What is his testimony? In that he came to earth as a man. That he lived 33 sinless years. That he tortured the last week of his life. Probably the greatest amount of torture we could even imagine. That If you read and studied in this internet age. The, the medical horrors that Jesus endured in the last few days of his life. And how, uh, how medically what was going on. Because he was still a man. And what his body would have been uh, doing during those periods of time. And the intense torture. And Jesus went through that specifically so that we could be saved and we do as many times as christians we ask him for salvation and we get saved and then we disassociate ourselves because we're ashamed of that testimony we're ashamed to tell the world that jesus died on the cross for their sins just like he did ours why is it that most of the world will show up in church on an easter sunday because we're happy to talk about the resurrected christ but are we happy to talk about what he's actually done in your life what he's actually done for you and what he's actually done for me. The Bible says, let him that heareth say come. When's the last time you shared your testimony with somebody? When's the last time you invited somebody to church? You know, I invited my landlord this morning again to church as I do often and said, hey, it's Easter. He's, he's got a Catholic background and Easter is significant to them as well. And I said, man, it'd be a great time to be in church. You should be in church. I'd love to see you in church. And, and often he has excuses for not coming. And yet... You know what he won't be able to say one day if he has to answer to God one day for his unfaithfulness as if he is a believer. He won't be able to say, well, there were Christians and they never told me. I was never told to come. I was never invited. Why? Because as a Christian, I don't want to be ashamed of the scars that Jesus bore for me. As a child, I don't want to be ashamed of the scars that my parents have uh, to bring me into existence. I want to be proud, and I want to honor them and lift them up, and I want to push them out. I often tell people I've got great parents when they say, wow, you know, you're such a great young man. They don't know me very well when they say that, but when they say, wow, you're so respectful, I say, you know, I had a very good upbringing, I good parents, and I use that opportunity to tell them how great my parents are, but as Christians, when's the last time when someone said, wow, you did really well there? Well, praise the Lord. God helped me with that. Uh, you know, let me tell you about that. Let me tell you how God changed my life. When, do, when have we done that? Take that opportunity, especially this week. People are thinking about it. The world is thinking about Easter. This is that time of year when religion, quote-unquote, is an okay topic. Share your testimony with somebody. 
Invite somebody to church. Even if you're too scared to share your testimony, invite somebody to come meet your pastor who will share his testimony with them. You can be sure. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ, Brother Noah. I'll keep it to 10 minutes here, and we'll get going right away. So listen up closely. I appreciate your uh, faithfulness, and I uh, heard some great preaching already. Uh, I thought Pastor was just his voice sounded so good. I thought he was going to keep right on going. But uh, praise the Lord for the opportunity. Lord, um, we love the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ, the greatest event in history. Amen? Is the resurrection. And let's go to John t- chapter 20, verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and see at the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Uh, Pastor mentioned going to Israel. I had the opportunity of going to Israel a month ago and what a great, great thing it was. But to see the place where we believe this very well could have happened, the sepulcher that was empty, the stone was rolled away and Jesus Christ was gone. He was not in that uh, sepulcher any longer. Let's go to verse 11 there and I want to uh, talk about two encounters with Jesus Christ. Two encounters here in John chapter 20 with, with the resurrected Jesus Christ. Look at uh, verse 11 there. It says, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. You can see here that she didn't know about the resurrection. She was sad that that the Jesus that she knew was gone. And so she had come to take care of the body of Jesus, Mary Magdalene here. And she comes to the the sepulcher, and he's no longer there. She runs into a man, and she doesn't know it's Jesus Christ. And we see what happens here in verse 16. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Um, we see here, uh, she understood now that it was Jesus Christ. Many times in the Gospels, um, they, it, even, even the Pharisees, um, the, the, the publicans, the, the, um, the uh, Sadducees, and the scribes, they would refer to Jesus Christ as a rabbi, meaning teacher. And when Jesus, when, when Mary understands that it's Jesus, she calls him Rabboni, which is, means to the great master. There's only one great master, and that's Jesus Christ. And she understands here that Jesus Christ was resurrected. Do you understand this morning that Jesus Christ is resurrected? There's only one um, that, uh, that has in the power of himself has, rect- has resurrected and that's Jesus Christ there was others that Jesus brought to life but that was through his power Jesus resurrected from the grave 2,000 years ago and what a wonderful thing it is to know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave. He got the victory over sin, death, and hell. The only person who has ever done that. That's the first encounter right there is uh, Mary Magdalene. And then we see down a little bit here, we see in verse 24, he had already met with the disciples, and there was one disciple that wasn't there, and it wasn't Brother Thomas, but it was um, Mr. Thomas here, uh, verse 24, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came the other disciples therefore said unto him we have seen the Lord but he said unto them except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe and after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus the doors being shut 
and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. What a wonderful story here. Jesus comes and he says, Then saith he to Thomas, verse 27, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. We saw the, the first response of Jesus was, was, um, was a, 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 re, a reverence and affection that Mary Magdalene showed um, Jesus Christ. And I think of, you know, one of the best things about being a father is, uh, is for, for uh, your children to know your voice. And when I come home from work, you know, when, when they hear the door open and they know it's me, um, to hear them coming, you know, through the door, fly into the door, and especially the little ones, they want to be picked up, and they're yelling, Daddy, Daddy. What a wonderful thing that is. And here we saw um, with Mary, when she understood that it was Jesus Christ, that love and affection that she had uh, for Jesus Christ. And then we see in this second encounter here, now we see the awe when, when uh, Jesus, um, uh, when Thomas sees Jesus, and now he believes and he has that awe for Jesus Christ that he says, my Lord and my God. He's had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Um, verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast set, seen me, thou hast uh, believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. This morning, there's probably 100 plus people in this church. And we have the opportunity this morning. You know, we haven't seen Jesus in the middle of Medford Square walking around. We have the account of Jesus Christ. We have history. We have so many facts to look back on with Jesus Christ. But you know what? This morning, we're not seeing him with our own eyes and with our senses. But we get the opportunity, like it says in verse 29, that blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. We have the opportunity to believe in him. Because, you know, it's not faith that we see it and then, you know, and then we believe like Thomas did. You know, if we have had an encounter with Jesus Christ, it is through faith that we get to have that encounter. Matthew Henry said, Be not faithless, for if we are faithless, we are Christless and graceless, hopeless and joyless. And, and, and that is so true that if we haven't put our faith in Jesus Christ, we have no hope. We don't, we don't have that hope of the resurrection for ourselves. Um, we, are, we are dead in our sins if we have not put our faith in Jesus Christ for the resurrection. And many other signs of verse 30. Truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. It is only through Jesus Christ uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 um, the disciples were preaching the gospel and Peter said in, in chapter just a few pages over from here in verse 12 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved when I was when we were in Israel we were talking to some Muslims and they said uh, you know we accept um, Jesus why don't you accept Muhammad? And you know, that's a sad thing to answer them to say, you know what, but it's also a wonderful thing that we have a resurrected Savior. We're, we don't have just the person who did good things, you know, and, a, and someone who preaches a false gospel, by the way, is not doing a good thing. You know what I mean? And so Jesus Christ is the only one who is resurrected from the dead. And so I got to tell him, saying, you know, like Pastor said, he's, if, if, if he wasn't the, the, the Messiah that he said he was, He's the biggest liar ever. You can't accept Jesus just as a good person. You can't accept him just as a religion to go to on Easter or to go to church every now and then or to when you're in need to pray um, to Jesus Christ. You know, even though you can't do those things, Jesus Christ is much more than that. Jesus Christ is the resurrected Savior of the world. And so in closing, I want to ask you, have you had that encounter with Jesus Christ? Have you had that one encounter with Jesus Christ. You know, it, 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 we don't, it's, it's, either, it's either an encounter or not. It's either faith or it's not faith. There's only two kinds of people in this room today. You're either saved, 
You've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, believing and put your faith in Jesus Christ who died and uh, was buried and rose again, or you are lost in your sins. There's only two groups of people. You either have it or you don't. You either have the Son or you don't have the Son of God. And the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And my friend, if you are here today and if you have not put your faith in the resurrected Savior, I beg you to do that today. It's the best decision you've ever had. How many times do you need to do it? How many times were you born? You're born once. And to become a child of God, you're only born one time into his family. And if you have not been born into God's family, to put your faith in Christ for your salvation and hope of eternity, then today can be that day for you. Uh, Pastor was talking about the power of the gospel. Brother Josh was talking about not being ashamed of the gospel. And this morning we talked, or now I've talked about the encounter with the gospel. Have you had that encounter with Jesus Christ? If you need to make a decision, the altar will be open now. And you can come forward and somebody will talk to you about any need you may have. Just raise your hand or, or uh, you know, somebody can come and show you from the Bible how you can be saved this morning on Easter Sunday. What a great day that would be. And if you need to make a decision, the altar is open this morning. As, um, Brother Cody comes. He'll kneel here with you. A lady will deal with the ladies, a man with the man, and show you in the Bible how you can become a born-again Christian. By the way, that's the only kind there is. You must be born again, Jesus said, to go to heaven. Thank you, fellas, for filling in for me. And I'm glad that I still do have a voice. I'd be more than happy to show somebody here at the altar. Please come as we sing. Let's stand together as we sing. Let's turn to 270, 270. Great, great messages, 270. as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Well, if you've been saved, are you ashamed to be baptized in water like John the Baptist baptized Jesus? I'm all prepared to do it. If you want to come, please come quickly. We'll have somebody go with you to prepare for the baptism. On stanza number three, please come. If you're not saved, if you're not in God's will, why not come? Get in God's will today as we close the service. Stanza number three. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O oh Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing, of the mind, yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I come.
that's the end of the song, but that's not the end of the invitation, folks. If you still have a need, don't walk out without getting that need met. We're so happy to see the church filled today for God's glory. Children are going to go to the park. Remember, there's portraits available if you have your family here. But take time to greet each other. It's still only 1142, and the afternoon is all yours for your family. Thanks for giving the Lord a couple hours this morning, those who came to Sunday school. Be back tonight at 6. You don't want to miss hearing these folks sing from Ireland. They not only talk funny, but they sing beautifully. And if you haven't heard an Irish accent, you want to be here tonight and hear one. Let's be dismissed. Eric, come dismiss us in prayer if you would. Again, I'm glad my voice survived as long as it did, and I'm happy that you've been praying for me. Thank you, Eric. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day as we celebrate your resurrection. Thank you for saving us, those who are born again, and those who are here um, this morning. They heard the clear gospel. It did not say or pray that you'll deal with them, that uh, they need uh, uh, the Savior. Uh, they can be hope in heaven with you forever. Thank you so much, Lord God, for uh, uh, your hand and protection upon us. Again, as uh, we celebrate today, um, as we go about our ways, may we remember um, how, how um, you rose again, gave us a new life, and uh, help us to again um, live a victorious Christian life. Give it, forgive us of our sins. Thank you for the blood of Christ. Again, Lord, help us not to um, settle for less. Help us again just uh, be conformed to the image of Christ. Again, dismiss us with your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.